So I finally got a hold of Fallout 76, which has become a very scary thing for me as a longtime fan of the series. Seeing all the negative press and watching countless videos showing the problems in the game made me wary of playing it. And I can say unequivocally, those problems are founded. But the most egregious error 404 Fallout 76 makes is not buggy AI or texture pop-ins or random freezing. Let's face it, every Bethesda game has had those issues. No, Fallout 76 makes one fatal mistake. It has Fallout in the title. I know because it comes up at the very beginning of the game, but it really shouldn't, because its reliance on being a Fallout game acts as more of a hindrance than a help and sacrifices things about the series in order to make the whole thing work. Frankly, 76 is no more a Fallout game than Other M was a Metroid game or Survive was a Metal Gear game. But to understand what I mean by that, we have to start by explaining something I call hallmarks. No, not that kind of hallmark. No, hallmarks are something franchises need to establish an identity. What is a Mario game? Jumping, hitting bricks, defeating Bowser, dad hat. What is Final Fantasy? Role-playing, protagonists who need to tip their stylists, chocobos, so much leveling, defeating some kind of god figure. Now when I ask you what makes a Metroid game, you naturally think of Samus Aran, badass bounty hunter, defeating Metroids and space pirates on her own terms, collecting new powers that allow her to access previously locked areas on the map. You don't think about an independent contractor who can't use her cool powers because her former boss dude asked her to lay off the missiles for some doomed military operation he's commanding. That's more like Team Ninja trying to make Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Metroid. And of course they already made the mods for that. Why would I think they didn't? That's not Samus! When you think of Metal Gear, you probably imagine Solid Snake, or Snake Equivalent, sneaking up to guards in a cardboard box, working his way to crazy boss characters that oddly contribute to the overall narrative structure. You don't think about playing a generic soldier poking crystal zombies through a fence. You can't have dead space without cutting off the limbs of necromorphs. You can't have GTA without stealing cars and firing at clueless bystanders. You can't have friends without toe for grace. So what are the hallmarks of a Fallout game? First, let's discuss obvious ones and how they apply in 76. Essentially, these are the branding for the series. Retro post-apocalypse. This is the look of the series, a dystopic view of an irradiated future with a 1950s sci-fi styling. Overall, 76 shares the same aesthetic as previous Fallout games. I mean, it basically looks the same as Fallout 4, with most of the same assets, no less. And I can't knock it too hard for that, considering my love of New Vegas, which shares many assets with Fallout 3. Some of the songs feel a little too recent compared to other games, but I'm not going to talk smack about the Beach Boys. The problem is, 76 could have used a completely new post-apocalyptic setting without losing much for content. More importantly, they wouldn't have to mess with the lore of Fallout, mostly so they could place the Brotherhood in West Virginia way before they canonically do, so we can have power armor. I mean, I like power armor, but I generally dislike retconning because it feels like lazy world building. Such is the problem with trying to shoehorn an existing franchise into a new concept. VATS. Traditionally, in the vault tech assisted targeting system, or VATS, the world slows or stops, allowing you to treat the game as a strategy-based RPG. You can target limbs to cripple enemies or heads to inflict critical damage. You can assign multiple shots using your action points, so you plan the most effective way to dispatch encroaching enemies. But in Fallout 76 being a multiplayer game, Bethesda couldn't make a bullet time mechanic. Imagine the game slowing to a crawl because someone on the other side of the map activated VATS. Just doesn't work. But they knew that VATS is a hallmark and needed to be integrated. I could argue they do the best with it I could imagine. But the system is just not built for real-time combat. In fact, it was built because of the problems with real-time combat, allowing you time to strategize. It's only effective here if you have enemies you can't pinpoint and feel like throwing caution to the wind. That feels very superfluous here and could have been eliminated, except it has Fallout in the title. Special. The special stat system is ingrained in Fallout. Yes, every game has implemented those stats differently, but how you invest those points at the start would inform you of your 
specialties <laughs> during your playthrough. Yes, I am proud of that. Honestly, I did like the idea presented in 76 that everyone just starts with all their special stats at one and get a point each level. I've actually been thinking about an RPG that starts you off as an unmolded ball of clay to be shaped by your experiences. However, I never imagined that being a Fallout game. Odder still, I actually liked the ability to trade out perks so you can replace early abilities for more useful ones as the game progresses. But it's the first time this has happened in Fallout, and it could have been implemented as a wholly original mechanic in a new franchise. War. War never changes. The tagline for the franchise, this has been an echoing sentiment for every conflict Fallout games set up. And by the end of each game, that war gets played out and has a resolution. Ironically, 76 lives up to the War Never Changes motto better than any, but for the wrong reasons. Instead of showing us the next big conflict, we have been deus ex machina into resolving this war with the monsters of Appalachia literally never changes. It's the same conflict over and over ad nauseum with no real climax. There is the war between humans and scorch beasts, or bat dragons, but it's not like you can side with the scorch beasts, hear their side of the story, learn about their rich social structure. No, they're just big monsters to fight. It's like if they dropped you into New Vegas and said, yep, you work for the NCR, period. Enjoy. Oh, if you defeat Caesar, he'll respawn in a couple hours. Railroading. Railroading never changes. On the surface, 76 definitely feels like Spider-Man. <laughs> Sorry, Fallout. All the branded stuff is here, but the modifications are so noticeable, I had to ask whether the game would have been better off being free of those conventions. But it gets worse when you think of the Fallout hallmarks that are less obvious, and how 76 doesn't utilize them at all. Companions. Something we've become used to in Fallout is our relationship to companion characters. They have rich stories and provide unique windows into a new game world. But you can't do that in 76 because multiplayer, Although you could argue that all the other players you barely know are potential companions. I don't want them to be, but sure, you get partial credit for that one, b -duh. Dialogue. You know how Fallout works, right? You see an NPC and either talk to that character or shoot them. Basically the two options. And while I was aware there were no human NPCs in the game, I didn't know there are zero dialogue trees for the other characters you encounter. This effectively removes an entire way to play the game, namely sweet-talking your way out of trouble. No, just press a button and the robot goes through its scripted response. Your character never has the option to respond or react, which leads us to another subject. Consequences to your actions. By the end of every Fallout game, your character will have reshaped the wasteland for better or worse. When you do something, the game reacts accordingly. Who likes you and who hates you are all results of how you played the game. But in Fallout 76, you just don't get that. The world is just the way the world is, and you run around inside of it. Even if you die, you only drop the scrap you were carrying, and even then, you just respawn near your previous location to pick it up again. And all those missions you go on to secure the jail or clean up the town... It doesn't change anything about the game world. Even the event quests repeat constantly, so you can quell super mutant uprisings or reprogram Mr. Handy's... over and over again. It just lacks any kind of player agency. A personal story. Whether you were the courier, the vault dweller, or the lone wanderer, you inhabited a real role in each game. You had purpose from the start, a mission only you could accomplish. Here you're just one of the vault residents. I'm apparently Don Quixote because I felt that was appropriate for this game. And your goal is to rebuild the wasteland, I guess? But since everyone has the same missions, the world is static and choices are not permanent, you're just completing quests for loot and leveling. This is why I don't feel Fallout should have been a multiplayer game. Maybe if it was on local servers where changes were permanent, handpicking a group of your friends to play in it, shaping the wasteland together for long-term goals, or possibly betraying them for your own agenda. It would be like a post-apocalyptic version of Game of Thrones, also known as The Walking Dead. 
And with all of these notable compromises to the hallmarks of Fallout, I find it weird how many of the complaints are focused on the amount of bugs and glitches in the game. I mean, yes, they exist, just as they did in every other Bethesda release. I mean, they just keep releasing versions of Skyrim six years in with the same bugs. Not to say 76 doesn't have a collection of other gameplay issues worth addressing. Like long stretches of nothing to traverse, uh, the reintroduction of degrading equipment. Yeah, glad you brought that back, Bethesda. A weight limit for my storage trunk? I, I do... What? Getting assaulted by enemies when I'm trying to use a crafting table. That weird thing when you hear other players' audio when they are in range. Level requirements for gear. Yeah, that's new. The necessity of a wiki so I can find out how to unlock that perk I need when the game doesn't just tell you it's tied to intelligence, it doesn't unlock until level 22, and... Okay, okay, enough of that. Point is, plenty of valid criticisms of the game's design can be made besides the freezing and glitching that I totally expected in 76 based on literally every other Bethesda game I've played. And yet, I must admit, I enjoyed playing around with this game. I had fun with it. Moreover, you can see why some people would enjoy it. And on the surface, you do feel like Spider-Man. Sorry, you feel like it's Fallout. But it's just a facade. This is much closer to a survival game like Ark, Conan, or Rust with a Fallout coat of paint on top. The deeper experience you want from Fallout, cause and effect, personal narrative, character development, is lost in 76. Sadly, that's all by design to accommodate a game that doesn't even boast a single-player mode. And that's sad because all the ingredients are here to do that, it's just that no one used them. Moreover, if this were not branded as a Fallout game, it could have been much better. It wouldn't have to rely on the expected mechanics of Fallout that simply don't work well here. It wouldn't have to mess with the existing lore to make the game fun. It wouldn't have to justify a world without NPCs. It wouldn't have to live up to a franchise into which it simply doesn't fit. The only real reason to make this a Fallout game was brand recognition. But Bethesda risked alienating longtime fans of the series by not giving them the experience they wanted. After playing a Fallout game, there are these stories you tell about what happened in your playthrough. Are there any stories we'll tell about Fallout 76? Like when I killed the Grafton monster for the third time? When I took a picture next to a crashed space station? When I couldn't go down a water slide? When I finally located a workbench so I could scrap my junk and lose my encumbrance? Wait, that's like every five minutes. Oh, hey, there's a Fallout hallmark I forgot. Picking up everything and becoming encumbered. Yeah, 76 nailed that part. Hey everyone, this is just Nathan saying, I hope you like some of the new video- Server not responding. Give it a second. Okay, uh, anyway, I hope that you're enjoying some of the new videos that are going a little in-depth on- Uh, what was I saying? Yes, uh, going a little bit more in-depth on, uh, the design- Hmm... Of games, and, uh, I'll probably be doing some fun videos come the new year. Uh, but I, I like doing some of these, and it- it might end up being another series that I do separately from attempting to play, so we'll see if, uh, you know, I ask some bigger questions of some of these gate. Mmm. Just wait. Okay, and re-equip my gun? Okay, great. Uh, so, you know, uh, I hope that you enjoy- Re-equip my gun? Okay, I hope you enjoy, uh, this video, and- Because I sure did, um, it was uh, uh, so much fun to, to make these, it, it is some work, but it's, uh, good. Is it coming back? Um, so, um, if we do more of these, there, uh, they probably won't be attempting to play episodes, I'll, I'll figure out something else to call them, I guess, uh, Maybe if, uh, the game... anything? And anything? Is the server... Does... Does the game hate me? Sometimes I just wonder if the game hates me at these moments. Anything? 
Uh, so, yeah, hopefully everybody enjoyed uh, this video, and uh, you might enjoy some of the other uh, ideas I had for videos uh, when I need to ask a bigger question about a game, a game world, a franchise, uh, and I hope to explore a little bit more of that come the new year. I hope you will join me when I do that. Uh, and, but for now, thank- Damn it!